This tutorial is aimed at users new to paint.net and unfamiliar with the concept of using layers in a photo editing program. You may think of layers as a stack of transparency slides that, when viewed together, form a complete image. Paint.net displays this stack as if you were viewing it from the top down. From within paint.net, open an image by going to File, Open, select your image, and click on Open. Go to File, Save As, and save the document as a PDN paint.net file. Notice that the image appears in the image list, in the layers window, and in the image canvas. Double click on the image in the layers window to open the layers properties box and rename the layer to something more meaningful. I've called my layer Desert. Click on the third icon from the left at the bottom of the Layers window to duplicate the layer. Double click on this new layer and call it Desert Copy. Click OK. Go to Adjustments in the menu bar and play around with any of the adjustments. What you do here will only affect the active layer. Removing the visibility tick on the top layer can let you see the layer beneath. This can be helpful when comparing before and after changes. You can undo any changes you've made by going to Edit Undo, or you can select the edit step you want to revert to in the History window. Make sure that you have the top layer selected. Change the top layer to black and white. Double click to get the layers property and change the opacity to 140. Now you will start to see through the black and white layer to the layer below. You can experiment with the various blending modes but for now leave the mode to normal. Unchecking the top layer shows the unchanged layer beneath. Make the top layer visible again and uncheck the original layer to see that the layer copy is translucent and you can see the checkerboard pattern beneath that indicates transparency. Make the desert layer visible again and delete the black and white copy by firstly making sure that it is highlighted and then click on the red X in the layers window. With the desert file open, click on the first icon from the left, add new layer, at the bottom of the layers window. A new transparent layer now appears above the desert layer. Rename this layer Red. Make sure that the red layer is highlighted. Left click on a bright red colour in the colour window to change the primary colour to red. Then select the bucket tool in the tools window and left mouse click in the image canvas. The red layer is filled with red pixels and you can no longer see the image layer below. With the red layer still highlighted, again click on Add New Layer, name this layer blue, and this time change the primary colour swatch to a bright light blue, and fill the layer with that colour using the Bucket Tool. This time select the Desert Layer and click on Add New Layer, and notice that the layer is created above the layer that you had selected and not at the top of the stack. Name this new layer yellow and with it highlighted fill it with a bright yellow. You won't see the change because the layer is hidden by the red and blue layers above. Remove the visibility ticks for the red and blue layers to reveal the yellow layer below. Select the yellow layer and move it to the top of the stack by clicking on the up arrow at the bottom of the Layers window. Double click on the yellow layer to open the layer properties and change the opacity to 120. The desert image in the image canvas appears to have a yellowy hue. Tick the red layer to make it visible. Because the opacity of the yellow layer is reduced, what you see in the image canvas is orange. 
Click the blue layer and now the image canvas appears green. Change the yellow layer's opacity back to 255 so that you cannot see through it anymore. With the yellow layer selected, choose the Move Selected Pixels tool at the top right of the Tools window and click inside the image canvas. You can see that the whole layer is now editable because it has a line showing around it and the nodes are flashing. Move your cursor over the middle node on the left edge and when you see the cursor turn into a little hand, grab the node and drag it to the right to resize it to around a third of the canvas. When satisfied, press the Enter key on your keyboard to confirm the change or press Ctrl D to deselect the current selection. Repeat this with the blue layer, only this time click on the node on the right hand side and drag to the left. When satisfied, press Enter or Ctrl plus D on your keyboard to accept the changes. Now in the image canvas, you should be seeing a striped image which appears blue, red and yellow. When you look at the layers window, you can see exactly what is actually going on. Select the yellow layer in the layers window and click on the merge layer down icon. This merges the layer with the blue layer. Click the Merge layer down again to merge that composite layer with the red layer. Now the Layers window shows one striped layer. Rename this layer Flag. With the Flag layer selected, choose the Move Selected Pixels tool and click in the image canvas. Move your cursor over the node at the bottom right edge. Hold down the Shift key to maintain the aspect ratio and drag upwards to resize your flag. You can now see the desert image beneath. Take your finger off the left mouse button, move the cursor until it turns back into a black arrow, then click and drag the flag to the top of the big hill. When it's in position, hit the Enter key to commit the change. Add a new layer and call it Flagpole. Choose a dark brown for the primary colour and select the rounded rectangle tool second from the bottom on the right in the tools window. In the options in the toolbar at the top of the window, select draw filled shape. Make sure flagpole layer is still highlighted and drag until the flagpole is the desired shape and size. Then choose the move selected pixels and move the flagpole into position to the left of the flag. Click on the flag layer to move the flag. With the flagpole layer selected, use the eraser tool to remove part of the lower end of the pole so that it looks like it is coming out of the middle of the hill. Go to File, Save to save your work. There are a number of ways to combine images using layers. In this section, I have used some of the more basic techniques. Go to File, Open and open another image. As before, the image appears in the Image Canvas, the Layers window and in the Image List. As I didn't close the desert file, its thumbnail also appears in the Image List. With the background layer selected, click on the Image Canvas and go to Edit, Copy. Now open up the previous image you are working on by clicking on it in the image list or opening it if you closed it. Make sure that the top layer is highlighted so that the new image goes to the top of the stack. Go to Edit, Paste into New Layer and select Keep Canvas Size in the Paste dialog box. With the Move Selected Pixels tool, Move the new layer into position and resize it by clicking on a corner nub and holding down the shift key. Do this until the koala is the right size to hang onto the flagpole. Don't worry if he's covering the flag. Once he's resized to your liking, click the enter key on the keyboard to commit. 
Go to Layers in the menu bar and select Flip Horizontal. Duplicate the layer with the koala on it and remove the visibility ticks from all the other layers. Use the Eraser tool to carefully remove all the pixels from around the koala. When erasing backgrounds, zoom in and out of the picture and start with a very small brush working up to a larger brush as you move further away from your subject. Use the scroll bars to navigate around the image. You should take a little more care than I'm taking. A project like this should probably take around half an hour to carefully remove all the pixels. Roughly move the koala into position and delete the original koala layer that was there just in case we made a mistake and needed to copy it again. Make all the layers visible Move all the layers into their final positions and make any final modifications to your image. Always make sure that the correct layer is selected before attempting any adjustments. Rename the top layer Koala, which I should really have done earlier. Go to File, Save to save your work. Add a new layer and call it Text Layer. Select the Colour Picker tool, ensure that the flag layer is highlighted in the Layers window and left click on the yellow of the flag to change the primary colour to the same hue. Click on the text tool and highlight the text layer. Choose a font. I've chosen Brush Script Standard size 48 and bold. Making sure that the text layer is highlighted, click in the image canvas and type the words layers in paint.net. Grab the flashing four arrow icon and move the text layer into position. Change the font size if you like and when satisfied hit the escape key or Control plus D on your keyboard to commit the text layer. With the text layer selected make a duplicate layer and call it text shadow. Right click the black swatch at the bottom of the colours window to turn the secondary colour into black. Click on the swap colours icon to change the black to primary and the yellow to secondary. 
Select the Recolor tool. Highlight the text shadow layer. Enlarge the Recolor brush and left mouse drag over the text which should turn all the yellow pixels to black. Move the text shadow layer to below the text layer using the arrow keys at the bottom of the layers window and with the Move Selected Pixels tool, move the shadow to where you think it should go. Then with the shadow layer still highlighted, go to Effects, Blurs, Gaussian Blur and choose a radius of 5. Then go to Effects, Photo, Glow and change the radius to 10 the brightness to 50 and the contrast to 50, or whatever settings you like. Press OK. Save your work. Save the file as a PDN file to preserve the layers and be able to go back and edit it later. and then save it as a JPEG at 100% quality to share online or use in other programs. When saving as a JPEG, you need to agree to flatten the image.